my mother, bless her soul, she's uh, dead. Uh, she uh, never really wanted kids. Uh, she had an affair in the army with my with my dad. Uh, they got pregnant. They ended up leaving the army. They were honorably discharged because you cannot be in the army pregnant, right? Um, my mother didn't really know my father. They realized they didn't really get along or like each other. And then uh, he left. It turns out um, bleh, she was abusive, like physically abusive, like very badly, like bones broken, many bones broken. My wrists like eight times, my ankle, my ribs, uh, just Jesus. she was she responded with her fists to as a child. Um, it's tough. So everybody knew it. You know, the schools knew it. Everybody knew it. Nobody did anything about it. Wah, 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 wah. My dad tried to win me through the courts back in the day. And this is because I'm older. There was a movie called Kramer versus Kramer. Do you remember that movie? And the dad was trying to win the boy and he couldn't because the courts would always give the kids to the mom, mm -hmm. regardless of the situation. So he didn't get me. I stayed with my mother. Um, she continued to abuse me um, and then threw me out when I was 13. So uh, I actually, I ran away when I was 13 and then I came back home and then she threw me out when I was 14. Wow. And where did I go? She made sure that I couldn't go to any friends' houses. So she called my friend's parents and said, I don't know, I did something horrible and don't let me in their house. Just, you know, hoping that I would eventually have to come back or I, I don't really know what she was thinking, but, mm. um, I grew up in Brooklyn. I was born in the army, uh, in Maryland and, uh, was very independent as a kid, uh, took the train into Manhattan all the time for various different things when I was younger. So I just got on the train and went to Manhattan and I went to this place called the village where I knew there were gay people. And if I go to the gay area, then chances of me getting raped or molested would probably be slimmer. Wow. So I then went and I slept on a set of stairs and then I met other runaways and we all banded together and became friends and we would sleep in hallways and stairwells and we would steal food from the t the Tobago, the Tobago, what the fuck are those things? Botago, no. Yeah, it's a Bodego. Bodego, Jesus Christ, it's been so long since I've been in New York. The Bodegos. So, you know, like I'd walk by and just lift a watermelon, like, you know, was, I'm admitting this now, but, you know, I was a homeless teen that had no money and I was starving. So um, I ended up uh, hanging out on, on some steps one day. I met two lesbians, Bobby and Anita, who worked at an S&M club called Leather and Lace in Manhattan. Um, they took me in. They didn't do anything to me. They were super cool and awesome. Um, they got me a job at Leather and Lace. They were, one was a dominatrix and one was a submissive. And I got a job underage answering telephones and making appointments for some of New York's finest to come in, politicians, doctors, actors, wow. all kinds of people to come in to this su super exclusive high end uh, eight room fantasy S&M club. Wow. So um, that was great. Uh, the owners were apparently like it was a laundering thing for the mafia, whatever. I don't know what the fuck was going on, but there was tons of cocaine and drugs, which I stayed away from because one of the things my mother did was a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. So and her thing was coke. And I, you know, I dabbled and tried it when I was younger. And then all I would do was like, you know, cry about my childhood. And I was like one of those downer coke people like, oh, my <laughs> Right. So yeah. I realized, and also you see, I'm very hyper. So Coke does the opposite. It makes me crawl up in a ball in a corner. Yeah. So I realized, yeah, that's not for me. So I'm now at this S and M club. They, they have piles of Coke on the fucking table. People are just snorting rails and <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. And then, um, I was just so, uh, like fascinated with the with what the fuck went on there was a baby room there was a torture room okay can you baby room can you explain a little bit uh, there was a people-sized crib a people-sized changing table like a diaper table um so that men could come in and, and wear be babies. diapers and yeah be and be humiliated and then um suck mommy's you know feet toes shoes uh be spanked be punished be put in the corner all that stuff. Mm. And I remember 
you know, being inquisitive and also, you know, had fucked up sexual things happen to me as a child. So I'm like trying to just work out my shit as a teenager. And so I remember they let me sit in on a session in the baby room and I dressed in black because if you wore black, you were dominatrix. If you wore white, you were submissive. And I don't want anybody to beat me because my mother did that enough. So I remember standing in the corner with a cat of nine tails and I was really, I was really scared. And uh, I think it was Mistress Bobby. I think she was the the dom. So she's like, bad baby, bad boy, blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, bad boy. Mm. And then I'd run back to my thing. And I was like, oh, my God. And she'd be like, Mr. Samantha, you come over here and you tell him. And I'm like, tell him, oh, my God, you're a bad, bad baby boy. And then I'd run back and I'm like, oh, my God, this is really weird. So I just ended up having this bizarre idea of what men's role in sex was and like you know like it was a very weird way to learn about sex in an s and m club yeah that's a very niche yes yes and then they had these wednesday night socials where every wednesday night the doors opened it was exclusive like 500 dollars a couple back in the 80s and all the eight rooms were open and they would, and there was like a big dance area with a, you know, horse and a torture wheel on stage and they'd put on shows and, you know, nail things through ball sacks. And I don't know, like just the craziest shit. So I worked it. We all had to work it, all the employees. So I realized that's when I realized don't walk around in white. Cause everybody wants to hit you. So you walk around in black and then, you know, I don't even know what the fuck I did. I just looked cute. And then they got word that. They were going to be raided, and since I was at the front door, uh, I then went to go work for um, a... So how old are you at the time that you were working at this club? 15, 14, okay. something like that. Okay. Um, then I had met a couple there. His name was Carter Stevens, and he was a very big pornographer at the time. And his wife's was, name was Baby Doe, and she was a performer at the time. And... Leather and Lace got me to become his personal assistant. And so I ended up moving in with him, her, and their son, who was also underage, Brayden. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived there for a little while. And I did assisting and mailed package, like their VHS tapes out, you know, because he was a distributor and mm -hmm. he, you know, did his own movies and stuff. From there, uh, somehow I got into, uh, into Studio 54, underage, met one of the owners, uh, was asked to go pick up a bag of drugs, did that. And then all of a sudden, like I was let in there all the time dancing, like, oh, dude, it's so crazy. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.